Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome back to another episode of my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 um, playthrough, playing as the Austin P. Governors in the OBC. This is my second season. Um, just got through the non-conference schedule, about to start our conference schedule um, in the OBC. We'll be playing 18 games uh, in conference, so pretty long schedule, uh, but... For the most part, we got through non-conference, meeting the goal I had. Uh, we were 6-5. and five. I'd, I would have loved to have picked up maybe another win or two. Um, but we just, you know, it was a tougher schedule this year than last year for sure. Um, we played Cincinnati, who they've been ranked a lot uh, this year. They've been ranked number one. They may still be ranked number one. Let me take another second uh, right now, but they've been one and two most of the year. And then we had some tough matchups uh, on the road against Texas A&M, Seton Hall, uh, Texas Tech. Uh, we won against the teams that we should have won um, and, and won pretty handily, I guess, against some teams. But the troubling thing is when we lost, we lost big. I mean, we were just not even in that Cincinnati game, lost by – uh, 30 plus points, lost by 20 to Texas Tech, uh, Texas A&M, double digit losses to them in Seton Hall, um, and and this Louisiana Monroe game. Even though it was on the road, I kind of had some positive feelings going into that one that maybe we could have, you know sneak the win in there going uh, into the conference uh, schedule, but just wasn't to be. And we're gonna have our work cut out for us if we can finish maybe 10 and 8 or above in the conference schedule. I mean, that'll be a pretty decent season. The goals again for this, uh, for the, for the board are that we uh, win 15 plus games a season. I'm hoping we can do that. Uh, but man, last year we just, everything fell into place. We won our conference tournament. We made the NCAA tournament, uh, won our first round game there. Goals aren't as high this year uh, considering that, but I don't see us uh, really, you know, I think to qualify for the NIT, we probably have to finish second or so in the conference, and I think that's going to be a tough thing to do this year. Um, so we'll see. I mean, if, if we manage to win 12 games in conference, that'd be awesome. I just think we're going to struggle. Uh, what I don't want to see is us have a losing record in conference. That would be a really big step back. Uh, but today I'm going to kind of review where we're, where we're at as a team uh, after those first 11 games, we'll play our first game at home against Tennessee Martin, uh, which shouldn't be a, a big challenge. You can see we're kind of uh, our assistant coach who does the scouting for us is um, predicting us to win fairly easily, but we'll see. I'll look at the scouting report to see how we match up. Uh, but that's what we'll do. And I want to uh, mention, too, right off the bat, if my voice sounds a little weaker or raspier today, I actually had uh, surgery earlier in the week. I had a um, unexpected surgery, and so I'm still recovering from that. Um, so my voice might be a little weak just from anesthesia and things they put you, they put you through when you do surgery. It's not a, you know it wasn't a big intensive surgery, but I'm still just kind of recovering from it. <clears throat> but hopefully I'll get through this episode okay. I might need to take a few gla uh, drinks of water here and there though, uh, but. <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to focus on, too, while we're on the dashboard, when it comes to the mood, I'm still struggling with how you improve that. I know a lot of it's going to be with um, guys wanting more minutes, especially Mike Ivory. Guy has great potential, but, he, you know, he's – I started out the season trying to give him more minutes at point guard, but he's just not doing what he needs to do um, when he gets out there. I will say that his last few games – he has been in the positive when it comes to, I guess, efficiency, if you want to say. So I'm assuming that when he's on the floor, we're playing better as a team. So that's, you know, that's primarily what you're looking for from your point guard, so I'm okay with that. Uh, but he's not giving us a lot of points when he's out there, um, not much in, on the defensive side when he's out there. So he gets into foul trouble, too. I mean, you know, Little, Little Rock, for instance, 11 minutes he had three personal fouls. 13 minutes against Texas Tech, three fouls. Although that Texas Tech game was probably his best. Uh, he gave us, uh, uh, what was it, five assists in just 13 minutes. That's pretty good, but um, four points. 
but that's been his season high four points and I know like I say I I know points are not the primary um, factor with point guards but I'd like a little bit more well-rounded play from him and I just I just I'm not seeing it so I've had to back off um, in the depth chart took I took away maybe two to four minutes a game from him already based on how he's playing and and that might be the case for the rest of the year he might be one of those guys who uh, as a sophomore he may decide to um, transfer out after this year if he stays unhappy other than him <clears throat> McMillian similar case he's a freshman though um, guy I just recruited this season he's looked a little bit better when he's in the game overall although he hasn't look great the last few games um especially against little rock he had a lot of a lot of minutes in that game and just didn't really wow me um he's had a few games where he scored you know five points here and there um uh, assist he's a little over two and based on the minutes he's not getting as many minutes as ivory so uh, i've kind of switched him around he should be getting either comparable or more minutes than Ivory for the rest of the season. Let me see how I've got it. So I've got Ivory with eight. I've got Million with eight. Yeah, so they're going to pro- probably be bounced up. And a few games into the season, if uh, or further into the season, if one of those steps it up even more, I'll probably adjust it again. Cunningham hasn't wowed me as the uh, starting point guard. He's a junior. I expected more from him. Um, he's giving me 4.4 assists per game, but he's also, uh, let me see, he's averaging 22 and a half minutes a game as well. So I, I, you know, I would hope to get a little bit more steals, for instance. Um, and yeah, it's it's not a big deal, but you know, last year our point guard was giving us, I think, over 10 points a game, and averaging, you know, this close to five assists a game. So that's what I'm losing in that position from the starter. So I'd like to see that. Um, again in the starting point guard for the rest of the uh, team though <clears throat> McMillian still leading the way in scoring but he's he's also unhappy and, and, and McKinnis I'm sorry I may have said the wrong name but he's really unhappy with the coach relationship and I uh, you know I'm trying to give him minutes um, he's he's as high on the depth chart as anybody on the team I don't want to give him too many more because he's just going to be tired a lot, and I think it's going to in, in affect his play. Like right now, I've got um, – let me see if I can – yeah, I've got him subbed at below 70, and I think, you know, I think that's too high. Um, I, I'm going to even ma- – I'm going to raise it just a little bit because I feel like um, – Yeah, I think that's about right because I, I there were a few games where he was really in the red in terms of his exhaustion level, and that's probably impacting his game. Um, you know, the play he's having too. Even though he's a freshman, we win with this guy and we lose when he doesn't perform. I mean, that's kind of how it's been. If you look at the game logs from him, um, he he played okay against Louisiana Monroe, but. Uh, there were a few games here, like against Cincinnati, he was just non-existent. Uh, Texas Tech, same way, minus 23. Um, Little Rock, even though we won that game, he only scored eight points. That was his, probably his worst game considering the uh, competition. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping he, he kind of shows me what he was showing me earlier in the game. He's already won five. Uh, he's been player of the week in the conference several times um let me see if where that shows up yeah and he's been player of the game five times player of the week five times um so when he is on we're probably gonna win if if he struggles it's gonna be the team's gonna struggle and uh hopefully that doesn't continue i I do think in terms of the rest of the team scoring wise um I have been pretty impressed with Jepson lately. He's picked it up a little bit. He's a junior, three and a half stars with a four star potential at small forward. He's a good outside shooter. He's been scoring quite a bit. Like, a, take out that Little Rock game. 
he's looked pretty good in, in several wins that we've had to. Um, hopefully he keeps that up. And then at the power forward, I'm still going with, um, well, I guess the dashboard would be fun to look at it there. I'm still going with um, Edwards as the starter. He's a senior. He's two and a half stars. He's, he's rated the best. But Laws is definitely outperforming this guy. He's getting, um, oh gosh, he's he's pretty good inside shooter. But he's he's getting 18 minutes a game. I guess Edwards is probably getting just a little bit more. But just to compare the two, Laws just under 10 points a game, 4.7 rebounds, um, and then on Edwards, who's starting, six points, three rebounds. And, yeah, well, he's actually backed off. He's not getting as many minutes. And I think that's probably because um, he's getting into some foul trouble in a few few games early, and Laws is coming in and looking really good. So I'm still going to keep it this way because, I, you know, maybe it's just Laws is, is comfortable coming off the bench, and maybe that's why he's scoring but I've got him in the depth chart here at um, power forward. He's getting 16 minutes as opposed to 20 for Edwards. And I think in the course of a game when foul trouble f- starts to happen, they're probably going to be about even in terms of playing time. And I'm going to leave it there for now because I just don't want to tamper with it too much. If I don't think Laws, uh, he's not unhappy with the playing time he's getting. And his ratings just, you know, they... He should be the backup, and so I think for now it seems to be working. So I'll leave it where it is. And the rest of the team, um, again, looking at points per game, um, Holland, he's the starting center. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting a whole lot of play out of him. I mean, just under five rebounds a game. Virtually no blocks from from a center. I would hope to see a little bit more than that. Um, that's why I'm trying to get another center in recruiting this year because uh, long term, even though he's just well, he's a junior already. Um, there's not much upside to him, um, and I, I feel like he's going to have to really start showing me something. Uh, coming off this Louisiana Monroe game, for instance. He had just one point in that game. That's that's really bad. And rebounds, um, just five rebounds. Um, so he's not giving me enough defensively to offset the low scoring. Uh, so I worry about the center position. Backup uh, was Mallet, who I've talked about quite a bit. He, um, I thought he was going to be a better player when I recruited him. He's not. But he has played a little bit better of late. Uh, but even him, for his size, he he doesn't get any blocks, and that's that's worrying me a little bit. If I look at the game logs, though, uh, the last four games, he's played pretty well at times, especially against Loyola, 10 points, um, not many rebounds, but, uh, you know, he gave me a little bit better inside play than, than he has in some games, so I guess I can take that. But not... Not the depth with this team that I uh, had last year. Definitely not the balance in that starting lineup. So it's big challenge this year, I think, in terms of how we're going to finish out the season and what kind of tournaments we, we may qualify for, if any. And then just looking at, at, at the standings going into the regular season, it's the same guys you'd expect. Belmont, they're on a great roll. 10-2 and two overall um, in terms of who they played. They haven't played any ranked guys. No, they played Tennessee and lost. Um, but when they've won, they've won pretty easily. Um, I, I think they're, again, going to be the class uh, of this conference. And other than them, I've, I've seen um, some pretty good wins from Moorhead State. They're 6-6 six and six on the year, but they beat um, St. John's on the road. They, um, it seems like there was another one that they beat pretty 
easily, but I, I'm, I guess I'm thinking of something else. But they had a pretty decent schedule, and that St. John's game, I think, pretty, pretty much put them on my radar because I thought that was pretty good. And other than them, um, I don't know. I think, I think we're probably going to be bunched up somewhere in the middle here with with teams like Southeast Missouri State, Murray State, Eastern Illinois. Um, I might be wrong, but it, it's going to be tough. Now, we're going to go ahead and play this game out, but I wanted to look at two things first. One is the recruiting. We got a verbal, and I think that went over that last episode. We got a verbal from the um, center who we had. Uh, let me get back to us. Um, we got a verbal from Travis Hart, who senior now in high school I know his rankings aren't that great but man he's putting up some good numbers this year and I hope that means that he's going to be improving I like his defense and shot blocking athleticism is pretty good for a center uh, pretty decent size for this conference rated high at inside shooting so I think he might be a sleeper you know I think once he joins the team gets into some practices, he might turn out to be better than uh, than his ratings look like right now. <clears throat> and then we've got Ike King. Same deal. He's, his numbers are looking a lot better than they were when I recruited him, so he, he might be having a good senior season. We're still his top school, so I'm hoping that uh, he's a power forward. He would give us depth. I'm, I'm thinking if, if we're able to sign him, he's a good uh, rebounder good outside shooter and inside shooter. So he could, um, with his size, 6'6", 226 pounds, he could be a pretty good power forward, I think. Looks like he's balanced in, in terms of his numbers in high school anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll um, get this game going. Tennessee Martin, 3-8 and eight coming in. Um, in terms of how our scouting report looks, um, our guards are probably going to be rated a little bit higher. We don't have an advantage anywhere else. I've been favoring outside in my offensive balance. I think I'm going to stick with that for this game, at least to start, and uh, see how it goes. But let's go ahead and get it started. And being at home, I'm hoping will give us a little bit of, of an advantage, but we'll have to see. I'm going to slow the pace down offensively. I'm going to crash the boards a little bit more on offense. And like I say, I'm going to favor outside at least to start, see how, you know, if our shooting is hot, I think that'll lead us uh, for most of the game if we start shooting well. And I'm probably going to back up speed. I had it a little bit high there. And we're on the board first, but we missed one of two on the free throws. Still struggling with free throws. That's no big surprise. But Jepson has scored our first three um, points of the game, but they score and draw the foul. Could have tied it up, but it's still 3-2. We get our first foul of the game. Second, sorry, on them, team foul. Jepson, five points. He scored our first five points. That's good. Uh, but another foul on a shooting foul at the other end. They make one of two. It's a 5-3 game. We miss a three-pointer. And they miss a layup. And we turn it over. Not playing too good so far. Greg Edwards called for a foul. Already three team fouls for us, two for them. And inside move there ties it up. And Jepson uh, misses the shot but draws the foul. He makes the first one, makes two of two on the free throws. He scored all seven of our points. That can't continue, surely. Ah, turnover, it's 7 7 game, another foul. I'm going to work the refs and we get a warning. Uh, They missed a three pointer. Still no points from McKinnis. Man, shooting has been really cold for us. Miss another three-pointer. That was Jepson. 
and they're struggling too. Three for seven from the field. Jepson draws another foul, looks like. Um, we're two for seven from the field. That's not going to cut it. Jepson misses the first one, makes the second one. He has scored all eight of our points. It's just an 8-7 game. Uh, they draw another foul, five team fouls, and we're at 14 minutes. I don't want to back off the defensive intensity yet, and McKinnis misses it. Finally, another score, this from Cunningham, inside layup. Kickball on the defense, it's 10-7. Good, good shot there from Ivory, of all people. And a turnover on the other end. It's 12-7. We got the ball back, though. And we missed a three. We're 0 for 1 and 0 for 3 in three-pointers. But we do get a foul that looks like Marshak. He misses the first one. We're 4 of 7, 5 of 8 <clears throat> from the free throw line. But we're up 13-7. Mike Holland, second foul on him. 16 fouls already. <clears throat> so we're about, about to send him to the line every time here. Uh, oh, good move there from Ivory. He's up to four points. He's playing pretty well. And out of bounds to Tennessee Martin. It's 15-7. Oh, we get the ball back. Good play there and draw a foul. Looks like that was Edwards who has two points already. But he can't can make the free throw. We get the rebound, but uh, turn it over. <clears throat> and they're really struggling shooting. Three for ten. It's out of bounds to us. Uh, we're shooting a little bit better. Six for fifteen. It's a ten-point game. But we should really be walking all over these guys. And that's McKinnis's first basket of the game. And they're struggling. They couldn't miss the layup there. Miss it again. And a foul, so that was their seventh. So we're going to be on the line now. Eight minutes left. It's 19-9. to nine. <clears throat> That's going to be Mallet. Um, he can be hit or miss. With free throws, he makes one of two, but we get the rebound. And he makes, makes the basket. It's 22-9. And they missed the shot, and Cunningham committed the foul. So it's seven fouls for us and them. They missed the free throw. They're one for six in free throws. Two for seven. Oh, big three-pointer from McKinnis. He's up to five points now. 25 to 10 score. <clears throat> and he went for it again, but missed it this time. So we're one for five in three-pointers. Nine for 19. Phil goes, uh, but we'll get the ball back out of bounds. <clears throat> and it's going to be a foul. McKinnis will go to the line. He's usually pretty good at free throws, but he, he's 1 of 2 in this one. 7 of 13 at the line. But a turnover from them. Big three-pointer there from Laws. So he's the one who's who's been scoring so much off the bench uh, in that power forward position. They're four for 17 in free throws, or field goals, um, 29 to 10. I would expect more points from us, though, the way they're playing. Um, this is a team, especially on, at home, that we should be dominating with the way they're playing. Um, and I know 19 points, that's a big lead, but we're just not playing well. Uh, you know, we're shooting 43% from the field. 42%, and it's now a 15-point game. Finally, Holland makes one inside, but another one inside. Back and forth here, 17-point lead, just under two minutes left. And McKinnis called for his second foul, so he's going to sit on the bench probably for the rest of the half. And we just can't get anything going. Uh Offensively, 12 for 27. Turnovers, though, 7 to 2, so that's good. Uh, but we got another foul on Cunningham. They miss oh, another foul. 
a mallet. So fouls are, are getting up there for us. And they make, what, one of two? They're three for 11 in free throws. It's a 16-point game. And another foul that's going to send Jensen to the line. He makes them both. We needed that, really. But they're shooting a little bit better now, it looks like. And we throw it away. 20 seconds left. It's a 16-point game. Uh, I'd like to keep them from scoring here, and but can't do it. So they played a little bit better down the stretch. Um, and it's a 14-point game. You know, they could poss possibly come back. Jepson, after scoring the first eight points of the game, um, he really got cold. Didn't see much from him the rest of the game. Um, McKinnis, six points. Looking pretty good. Um, Cunningham, a couple assists, two points off the bench. Mallet, three points, a couple rebounds. Um, Ivory, four points. I mean, that's unusual for him. That's good to see. But shooting-wise as a team, 9 for 23 for them. That's why they're struggling so much. They haven't hit any three-pointers. Really struggling at the line. And uh, I'm going to keep everything the way it is. Even though we're scoring more in the paint, I really feel like we're going to win outside if, if it comes to that. I don't want to go balanced and focused yet. Um, so let's just keep everything as it is and see if her shooting picks it up a little bit in the second half. Three three fouls now on Strong. I don't know if he's one of their better players, but that's going to be uh, Edwards missed the layup, but he did draw the foul. Oh, man. Misses. First free throw makes the second. So we're just 10 for 17 in free throws. Uh, but they're not scoring. We get the ball back. We can't. We can't make it. I don't know what's going on here. Shooting is not good. We need to be shooting a little bit better against this team. Edwards called for a foul. And then they, I thought they threw it away, but maintained possession. Mike Holland blocked the shot. That's crazy. Um, and they call a timeout. And another foul. Uh, it's going to be a shooting foul. And they make two. Uh, so they're 5 for 13 in free throws. And it's a 13-point game. We need to start scoring here. Another foul on them. And Edwards scores inside. They score inside on the other end. Uh, foul. Just their third team foul, though. And Holland throws it away. And they make a three-pointer. It's a ten-point game. Holland, though, good move inside. 12-point game. We're not really doing much outside. Uh, Cunningham is going to draw the foul. He's only got two points this game, but makes both free throws. Uh, we're 12 for 19 from free throws, but just 43% from the field. Not good. Miss a three-pointer, and it's out of bounds to them. It's a 14-point game. And they draw another foul. That's the third foul on Mike Holland. Don't want. I don't want to have to rely on Mallet at center uh, going down the stretch although he draws a foul here he's he had three points a couple rebounds the first half and he makes both free throws so we're up by 15 again biggest lead of this half but they come right back and score man we are so cold shooting doing a good job of rebounds but it's not really helping us we're under 40% now in shooting. Maybe I should go more balanced and see what, see if we can um, get some easy shots inside. Um, Mallet called for a foul. If both centers get in foul trouble, we're in trouble for sure. Finally, another uh, basket from McKinnis. 15-point game again. And they can't score on the other end. Holland back in there. He draws a foul. 16 fouls for him already this half. He makes both free throws. We're a little bit better in free throws right now. 16 for 23, almost 70%. Uh, good steal or turnover there. And another foul that's going to put us on the line. 12 and a half minutes left. Ah, uh, but he misses it. That was Ivory. 
Oh, Ivory looks like he may have gotten a steal there. That was a good play. And they throw it away. So 19-point lead. That's our biggest lead of the game. Ah, but we throw it away on the other end. And a foul on Ivory, his first. So he's got two steals. He's playing pretty well in this game. I'm going to give him a little bit of credit in this one. They're still struggling at the free throw line, 6 for 16. Um, missing both, 6 for 17 at the line. Jepson drew the foul. He has yet to score since that early run. But he does at the line, makes one of two. And they're cold, shooting 35%. And Jepson is third foul. Um, but a 22-point lead, I think, you know, we're, we're pretty much in control. But we're just not playing as well as we should be, considering what they're giving us. I mean, they're all but, you know, just giving up. And, and we're still not running away with it. Or, well, we're running away with it, but we're just, uh, you know... Shooting from us is really poor. And, uh, no outside. The three-pointers, two for nine, not good. So it looks like Mallet, who's got seven points already. I think his career high is ten. He misses the free throw, but we get it back. Another foul. This is Jeff Jensen. He makes them both. 19 for 29 in the free throws, and we're up by 24. So I think we're going to win, but... I don't know if it's a win I'm going to be all that happy with. Oh, good play from Mallet. He's up to nine points. I'd like to see him start, you know, developing. I don't, the way this game seems to work, I don't know if you see much development in game in terms of the actual ratings, but. I think you can probably see their gameplay as they get more minutes improving. So that's what I'm hoping to see from him. Another foul. Man, they're up to 10 team fouls or more because um, it stops counting at 10. But that's going to send McMillian to the line. He makes them both. We're 21 of 31. Got a 25-point lead. Ah, Mike Mallett, his third foul. So he's going to struggle. He, he may not get his uh, career high here. And they make both free throws finally. And we just, we have been so cold outside. Two for 11 in three-pointers. And Greg Laws called for the foul. He's not been too good off the bench. Um, one of his poorest games, he is giving us four rebounds, but only three points. And again, McKenna's struggling. Ten points, but um, he's up to four fouls. Wow, that's that's tough for him. He's he's gonna he's gonna really struggle, I guess, to hit his uh, average for the year, which is like 15 points or so. He scores there, though. He's up to 12. Coach uh, AI coach, anyways, leaving him leaving him in there with those four fouls. It's a 22 point game. And another foul. Who's that going to be? Uh, Holland, his fourth. And we've matched him now in team fouls for the half. But they're so poor in free throw shooting, not even hit 50% yet. And McKinnis, I said he wasn't going to hit his uh, season average, but he's now up to 14, game, 14 points. McMillian throws it away, though. Marshak off the bench called for a foul, and they miss both free throws. That's been really one of the poorest uh, free throws performances I've seen from a team that we've played. And Holland is going to foul out. So, Mallet, it's up to you to another two points and you'll have a season high. It's 22-point game. Jepson misses it. It's out of bounds to them. Three minutes left. Oh, Oh, come on. He misses two easy baskets there. That was uh, Edwards. And Edwards is the starter. That's what I'm saying. I mean, he's two for eight in field goals. Just um, he's got the better rating, so I'm not sure. And that was 16 points for McKenna, so he's above his season average. 
And is that a foul? That was a foul on Cunningham, his third. It's a 22 point game. And they make both free throws. Still not to 50%, though. And we haven't been to the line in a while. One and a half minutes left. Miss it again. We're just shooting just over 40%. Right at 40% right now. Not good. And Mallet going to go to the line with the chance to... <laughs> well, he missed the first free throw. If he hits this one, this will be 10 points, and he can't do it. And, and they've drawn within 16, and, and that's probably going to be how, how it ends. Very poor shooting performance from us. 22 for 56. Um, you know, we've won easily, but, man, this was not a good performance. And this is what, you know, this is what scared me a little bit about this team. Um, last year, we would have, you know, the, the score may have been the same, but we would not have shot under 40% uh, and, and, you know, under 20% from the three-pointers. Uh, just a different team. And uh, you can see, too, they were within two points in the second half. Uh, we just could not run away from them. Um, individually, Mike Holland, player of the game, he did have seven rebounds, and he did that fouling out. Fairly early, uh, a good overall game from him. Otherwise, uh, McKenna, 16 points, three rebounds. He did what he usually did, does. Um, Jepson, just nine points, but 10 rebounds. And and think about him. I was expecting a huge game from him after that start he got. And um, Edwards, I just I don't know what to do. I mean, six rebounds. Um, Plus or minus, I mean, we were we were doing pretty well when he was on the floor, but Laws, in 19 minutes, same amount of time, um, scored same amount of points. I, I just don't know who's the better of those two players, honestly. The plus or minus was better with Laws, but uh, I don't know if that's going to mean a whole lot at, at the end of the day, but... I'm struggling at a, at a few positions. Point guard, Cunningham, that's not what you want to see from a point guard. 23 minutes, um, just one field goal out of just two attempts. So he's not really trying to shoot. And two assists and um, two steals for what it's worth. But, man, that's that's troubling from a point guard. Um, and then backup, Ivory, in nine minutes, uh, scored four points, same as Cunningham, and had a couple steals to that. To his credit, that's that's pretty good to see. Um, another good thing is everybody got a chance to play in this game, but um, didn't wow me. We're going on the road against Tennessee State, I think, in our next game. Um, they are probably going to beat us pretty easily if we don't play better than this. Team wise. It took a very poor uh, performance from Tennessee Martin. I mean, you know, we outshot them. We had 11 more baskets. Um, we out-rebounded them 40 to 32. Uh, turnovers 14 for, to 6, so that helped us out. But had they not played as poorly as they did, they would have been in the game and may have won it. Um, if, if you give them, you know, I don't know, eight more points at the line, you know, it's a, it's what what is that like an eight point game, a little bit better shooting, and they could have easily won it. In terms of how we scored in the paint, pretty good. We had to because our outside shooting was so cold. But um, we never really were in trouble in the game. There were just three lead changes and two ties. We led it by as much as twenty six. So um, a pretty good win in some ways, but doesn't make me feel too great about our chances this season. So we'll take a look at the, and there's a big upset. Oh man, big upset in the, in the first week here. We'll take a look at the games. So that's going to be 
Eastern Illinois lost to Jacksonville State. Uh, that's kind of an upset. Eastern Kentucky beat Murray State by 12. Southeast Missouri over Moorhead. Tennessee Tech, big win over Tennessee State. But SIU, Edwardsville, beat Belmont. That's pretty incredible. So that's um, that really shakes up the standings on the first week. So you give Belmont an early loss, and that's going to make it better for everybody in this conference. Uh, give give everybody a good feeling, really. So I'm surprised by that. I'm surprised that Murray State and Moorhead State lost uh, too, but they may have lost on the road. So let's go ahead and. I'm going to go back to the dashboard because it usually tells me uh, some team news. So our next opponent, yeah, Tennessee State, rated pretty much like we were against Tennessee Martin. Um, and that's going to be on the road. So that'll be our next game. What I'll probably do is go through a few more games um, offline and then come back. Um, let's see what would be a good matchup. Maybe a road game next would be uh, for the next episode. I guess the team that hopefully we would have a chance at winning, but you know, uh, one of the better anyway teams in the conference. So let's see, Tennessee State—they're just four and eight, and they're coming off a loss, big one to Tennessee Tech, who I don't expect to be all that great in the conference, but. Let's take a look. So, um, maybe Moorhead State, maybe Belmont. Although we've played them so so good, but I'll probably play through another three or four games offline and see who's looking good uh, in the conference. And next game will be probably a, a road matchup against um, maybe maybe Moorhead State would be a good one. Jacksonville State might be a good one and. But we'll see. Um, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we'll turn it around and play better than we just played, and and be in a good spot like we were last year, in terms of in the conference, at least maybe top four in the conference. That would be that would be a good accomplishment, I think, for this year. Uh, but that's how I'll leave this episode. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel and, and staying with this playthrough. I hope you enjoy it, and um, I will see you next episode.